Hi, Mike Hancock here, and I hope you're enjoying these little videos. I'm talking to you about launching my book, KV55, which is part of the David Clark series of books. They're available on our Amazon Kindle as from November the 8th. This is book two in the three books I'm going to be sharing about today. It's the story of Akhenaten and Akhenaten, the rogue pharaoh who changed the religion in Egypt, but particularly about a set of frescoes, um, or we could call them tablets, that he was given by the king of Babylon. And on those frescoes is one of the secrets to longevity. And in our book, we have Caspar and Michaela Immerman from Finland, who run Casmic Pharmaceuticals, who are definitely after this because they want to have the secret of longevity because it's going to make them multi-billionaires. Now, our protagonist, David Clark, who the series is named after, and uh, his partner, Abby Beck, and his business partner, Rocco Risotto, are uh, on a venture through Egypt and through Scotland and Ireland to actually put a stop to these very nasty people. And today I want to share a little bit of the research about how the link happens between ancient Egypt and also between the Scottish and Irish Isles. So for those of you that have never heard of this, this may be something entirely new for you. There's some deep research that goes right back to the 12th century and a book called The Scottish Chronicon but uh, that talks about this all the way back then. There are many other sources as well, but I'm just going to share a few of the sources today. Not that I used, I didn't actually use any of these sources today, but things for you to go and check out, and maybe have a think about if this appeals to you and you'd like to know more. So after Akhenaten came Smenkari, then Tutankhamun, and then the Pharaoh A. Now A goes right back he was the grand vizier or chief priest, if you like, of all of those pharaohs I mentioned, and even of Akhenaten's father as well, Amenhotep III. So quite uh, quite an old chap by Egyptian stances, probably about 55, 60 years old, who marries his granddaughter, um, Anki, and then they have to leave Egypt. They have to escape. Now, they're pretty much run out of Egypt by a new pharaoh who ends up taking over called Horemheb, who was actually uh, a general um, for Akhenaten and previous to that, a scribe for his father as well. So there's a lot of mixing and mingling actually happening in history in Egypt at that period in, in Egypt. But what uh, actually happens is that as I, or A as he's called, and Anki head originally with about a thousand others um, originally to the island of Majorca and then to Scotland and eventually to Ireland, we actually find that they have some pretty cool legacies in those places. So the first thing that I really wanted to share with you was this uh, this thing, which is the burial mound, which could be the burial mound of Anki that is actually in Tipperary, which is part of where our book uh, plays out, not too far from this, in fact, in Carthy Castle. So they have found um, uh, an Egyptian princess buried in Ireland who actually has around her faience beads. Now, the only other place that they will find faience beads was in the tomb of Tutankhamun. So it's very closely linked in terms of time, hence one of the, uh, uh, the, one of the links there in the book. So if you're Irish, maybe check yourself because you may just have some uh, DNA in you. So this little article which came out is actually about the boats. And in my last video, I showed you one of the Egyptian boats, but these have been found around the British Isles as well, dating back and linking the, the boat building style to ancient Egypt. Now, they could have been Egyptian wood. Um, they could not have been Egyptian wood. They may have been local wood, but the boat building style basically is exactly the same, which is unusual. Normally, there would be an influence in that type of thing. If this is getting you interested about reading the book, KV55, then you can go to Kindle, Google my name on Kindle, Mike Hancock, and look after the David Clark series, type in KV55, or simply use the QR code. Now, this book is not available till November the 8th, but that is not too far away, I have to tell you that. There is also a large degree that trace um, A and Anki to Scotland. So they leave New Yorker and they go to Scotland where she becomes Prince Scota, hence the name Scotaland, Scotland. And so this is a pretty cool story from antiquity that originally appeared in the 12th century, 
uh, in a book which links back to ancient Egypt. How people in the 12th century in the Celtic Isles even knew about Egypt then is also part of the questioning there. But as you uh, probably know that DNA can prove some of this stuff and there are definitely DNA with ancient Egyptian roots in Ireland and in Scotland as well. So the story thickens. If you are Scottish or Irish by birth, you may just be an ancient Egyptian. So I'm not going to share with you today what happens at the end of the book, but there is quite a chase going on throughout um, Ireland in particular and also in Egypt, which culminates in a final scene, uh, which is a really powerful final scene, I must say, in the Great Pyramid, where I actually weave in some of the things that I've experienced there in Egypt myself on different tours and tours that I've led to Egypt as well over the years that actually happened that I shared in in the very first video of this particular series on KV55. So I'm going to say, suggest to you, go and check out the book, go and check out the David Clark series, grab yourself a coffee coffee and a copy. Uh, it's a really good read. I think you'll find it really fun. There's a lot of action in it. There's a lot of adventure. It keeps moving. If you're a fan of Down Brown, Clive Cussler, uh, James Rowland, Steve Berry, those type of authors, then you are probably going to love these books. In fact, this book was edited by Dan Brown's editor uh, and also Lee Child's editor who worked on some of their series with them as well. Um, and she did a great job of editing KV55 and asking me the very tough questions that editors have to ask so that I make sure that I give you the best product. Go and check it out. I'll see you again soon.